Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Peter Palmer Podcast, where week to week we attempt to read every issue of The Amazing Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man is a comic that's written by Stan Lee. And also on the show, we review movies for the first half an hour at the start, and we do this so you can be a Spider-Man expert as well, if you care. Hello, my name is Mike. I'm one of the co-hosts. And I'm Sammy. I'm the other co-host. Yeah. With the most. <laughs> most what? Uh, depression. <laughs> oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'm bleeping that out. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, what is there to talk about this week? Did anything happen with us on social media? No, but something happened this week in the world. What? Yeah, the Far From Home premiere happened. Okay, sure. We can talk about that. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. No. Um, yeah, that happened. I'm very excited to watch the film in the next few days, next week. Yeah, well, by the time this podcast is out, you guys can actually listen to our review, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Of the film. <gasps> and I'm also, so excited to watch it. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my if, fucking God. If you're preparing to watch Far From Home, uh, you can listen to our commentary track for Spam at Homecoming, which exactly. is also out. It's pretty funny. We're doing plugs up the top. I yeah. don't know why. We'll plug it That's again good. at the end in case yeah. people forget. That's good. Also, how extra was the freaking Spider-Man Far From Home premiere? They, like, shut down the whole ass street, had a bigger float of Spider-Man. Tom Holland showed up in, like, a fucking car that's just got webs all over it. Like, yeah, a car dang. that has no purpose after the, yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> premiere. Real sick on mode. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Looked, looked really fun to be at. I'm only pointing this all out because I entered that competition to go and, <laughs> to I, win, didn't, yeah. and I didn't win and I really thought I was going to for no reason. The chances reason. were probably very slim. Yeah. Like, I didn't even want to know what the chances were. Exactly. But just the chance was there that, and that's all that counted and, I, and we didn't win and it just made me so sad because I could see the winners having fun and I'm so grateful for them, good for them, but I'm just so sad it wasn't me. That's all. Anyway, yeah. let's continue. Did I have another thought about that? Not about that, but the far from home. The whole premiere. far from home thing? Oh, probably not. Predictions about Mysterio? Mysterio. Oh, yeah. We're each going to make a prediction now. We're recording this on Friday yeah. before we see the movie. We're each going to make a very bold prediction in our segment we like to call Let's Predict a Thing About a Film. It's probably wrong, but that's the fun of it. <laughs> That so, one. What was your prediction? What was it again? For Mis- Mysterio's twist. Oh yeah, wait. What was mine? Oh yeah, I'm gonna predict. It's probably completely wrong yeah. that he is from the Raimi universe. <gasps> oh my god. Yep. Well, because J.K. Simmons was at the premiere, so that was also a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But my my reasoning for this mainly is because like Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh. Well, wait, no. I was going to say he looks like Tobey Maguire, but that doesn't help my theory because I don't think he's Peter Parker, but I think he he might be from a universe that also has a Peter Parker and that's why he's kind of drawn to Spider-Man Yeah, and brings on that kind of bond. Or maybe he is Peter Parker from another universe. Maybe. That's what, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say. Features uh, wise, like I feel it, like they cast Jake Gyllenhaal specifically for like a look. A likeness to Pete. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that. I was reckoning it's probably Pete from another universe or, mm. yeah, another uh, multiverse. That was one of the other theories. But I'm yeah. going to say Raimi universe just because I'll Please. be wrong. Yeah, that's so sick. A, a character from the Raimi universe yeah. is your one. And mine is Pete from another multiverse. And also my other theory is that uh, they're actually not – in Europe, it's just a miniature. It's just a mini, like in that um, uh, issue we've read. They've all been read. shrunk down with pim particles. <laughs> oh my god! Please, Ant Man's in it. In on it. Sorry, in it. Ant Man in it. <laughs> Ant Man in it. Yeah, that's they're the, in. That's the one where he goes to Europe. Yeah, they're in Europe. Ant Man in it. That's the third one. Yeah. <laughs> if Far From Home successful, Ant Man three will be in Europe, in and Europe. it'll be called Ant Man in it. <laughs> Ant Man in it. And that's what we called. Um. Yeah. Cool. Oh, Is that go. it? Do you want to go to the movie segment now, or I don't know, yeah, anything to say? This is the movie segment with Sammy and Mike. This is the movie segment. Hang in tight, my boy. Um, did you watch anything interesting or what? Um, you want anything you want to talk about this week? 
look. Yes. There's things, there's not things that I don't not want to talk about, but there are things that I do, do want to talk about. Okay, go for it. I actually didn't watch much this week, to be honest. Me too. For some reason, I, was, I didn't. Oh, looking at my list, I'm like, wow, I did not watch anything. Even though it's felt really long since the last episode. I didn't go to the cinema this week at all. Oh, I did, actually. I saw. Oh, you oh, this did? Was, yeah. This was a whole week ago, though, now. Yeah. This was on Friday. I saw Parasite, directed by Bong Joon-ho. It's a Korean film, if you're not familiar with this director. Are you familiar with him, Sammy? Have no. you You've seen Snowpiercer. Oh, that's his... Yeah, okay. you've, you've seen Okja. I love Snowpiercer. I haven't seen Okja, though. Oh. I've been meaning to watch it, but Snowpiercer is one of my favorite films. Really? Because well, like, it's society on a train? I mean, it's cool. And Chris hey, Evans is... Chris Evans is in it. Yes, okay. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. I was going to no, say that. I was going to say because Chris Evans is the lower class and he's trying to... I was going to say Ed Holmes. <laughs> Ed, Ed Harris. Harris. Imagine if Ed Helms was the bad guy in that. That's no, Ed Harris. Yeah. Which is, is funny because he is also beh- the guy behind everything in the Truman Show. And he's also the guy that's behind everything in Westworld. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. What's with Ed Harris doing yeah. these roles? <laughs> yeah. He is the master of the simulation yeah, in every much. aspect. Yeah. Whoa, imagine if he is. <gasps> what the fuck? Okay, no. never mind. That's cool. Anyway. Parasite. Yes. Oh, do you know? Do you, do you know anything about this movie? No, not at all. Okay. I, don't I won't say too much. Is I'll it say in like in Korean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'd say it's not his most realistic. Oh, well, in a way, compared to his other movies, like it's not a high concept thing, like a Snowpiercer or Okja or The mm-hmm. Host. It's like a a family drama that escalates and escalates and gets really kind of messed up towards the end. Ooh. That's what I say. Interesting. But one parallel I was thinking was like it's shoplifters but like on cocaine. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Because the initial setup, I'm like, this is kind of like shoplifters where it's like about a low-class family that are like really struggling and yeah. there's kind of evading the law in some aspects. Mm-hmm. But do you want me to tell you the basic like setup of it? Yes, please. Yeah, because the even the title Parasite is very intriguing to me. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like this lower class family and there's this higher class family that they don't like and they're pretty much lying their way into like taking over their enterprise. Oh, in a sense. So shit, okay. The son is the first one that goes to apply for a job interview because they find they need a tutor for their daughter Ooh. and they're like, Wait, you haven't gone to college, so you don't have the qualifications. So he had to make like make a fake resume yeah. and stuff. And because he's like naturally pretty smart, he gets the job. And they keep like plotting against this high class family to uh, like take over all their jobs. Like they get the cleaner in trouble. So then it's Aww. like, Mom, you can be the cleaner. And like they pretend they don't know each other. Yeah, and they pretend they don't Crazy. know each other. And of course, at some point. Uh, that That's may or may not be revealed. Yeah. And yeah, it's like other stuff. It's like they need a personal driver so they get the driver in trouble so the dad can be the driver. Wow. Yeah. And all this is like the probably first, maybe not even first half of the movie. Yeah. Because w- when it reaches that point, I'm like, okay, where is this going now? That the whole family has been Hired. like, yeah. And then it turns into a much... Uh, I want to say darker movie because the first half it's kind of like a almost a comedy. Like people were laughing a lot. Yeah. And in the cinema I was in, it was like a lot of Korean people, so they were getting the comedy a lot more probably because yeah, they could understand the language. The nuances of the humor and yeah. stuff. Yeah. There's one bit where this dude literally cackled for maybe a whole minute. Oh really? <laughs> and it was making everyone else laugh, and it wasn't even something that was that funny. That was like Seamus when we were watching Widows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like nobody laughed, but he laughed and made, yeah. made the whole audience laugh. It was like yeah. that, but this dude was like howling. Oh my God. Because like the whole cinema laughed at this one bit. But then this one dude kept going like, ah, ah. Oh, like, really? During the next scene. What the fuck? Well, luckily there were subtitles out, so I didn't miss anything. Yeah, exactly. But he had to like stop and so it's like, ah, ah. Oh my God. That's so funny. That's great. I love Everyone that. kept looking at him. <laughs> That's amazing. That's my favorite thing. That's my yeah, new favorite Parasite thing. Parasite is very good. It's probably my favorite film of the year so far. There hasn't been many like I'm waiting smaller on movies. Yeah, that have been released here properly. Probably going to like 
be in my top five. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because you, think, you yeah. finished watching Hereditary, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. Fuck. I need it's to good. watch it in a cinema. I really want to watch it in a cinema, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Hereditary. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it twice, I think. That was a really good movie. Yours. But apparently Midsummer is more of a, a comedy. Really? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay. I don't know if it's comedy in like a traditional sense or if it's just like Dark. darkly yeah. funny. Kind of like how Parasite was. I love a good old, like not good old, but I love a good daylight horror. Yeah. Mm. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes. Um, anything else you watched? That uh, you I watched Up, kind of. <laughs> the first, I always say like the first 20 minutes of that movie, are like the best Pixar movie. And then it feels like they didn't have a story after that like initial pitch. And they came up with a story. You know what I mean? Imagine if it was just actually started off as a short and then they just made it. That's what I think. Like they had this idea of like uh, this guy who's lived a whole life and he lost his wife. Hey, get it? They should have called it that. A guy lived a life and he, he lost, lost his wife. His wife. Lol. That's now, they had this idea question. where he wants Spoilers. to fulfill his wife's lifelong dream. And they had to kid. pad out a whole story in between that, obviously. Yeah. But I like the character of Russell. Yeah, Russell's cool. Like, I the was, characters aren't... Uh, I don't like the dogs. The dogs are yeah, very silly. Yeah, the dogs and Kevin, whatever the stupid yeah, bird uh, is called. The, Kevin's a girl. The whole oh joke God. with one of the dogs, like, voice um, box is not bro. working. It's like... <laughs> like that's like so this. not funny. Yeah, exactly. But it's funny to kids, so I can, like, get that. I guess so. Yeah. I felt bad when Doug had to wear the cone of shame. Oh, but it always stuck with me. Because I remember around that time is when uh, my dog had to wear, wear the wear cone. Of shame. Yeah, Aww. it was funny. Uh, but up, well, what's this? Say? You've all seen the movie. Yeah. It's pretty good. They had to animate all those balloons, which is pretty cool. Yeah, one by one. There's a bit where Mr. Fredrickson ex- assaults a man. Do you remember yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he is. smacks him in the head and he starts bleeding. I'm like, yeah. oh, he's bleeding in a Pixar <laughs> movie. <laughs> I know. I'm like, got a head wound. House. Yeah. He fucking whacks him, dude. He whacks him good. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah, that first 10 minute, like the montage at the start is some very good visual storytelling and I wish more animated movies would do stuff like that. Yeah. And not just start with a narration of like, so once upon a time the pets all lived in harmony and then something changed. I don't know. I don't, that's not from anything. I was just making that up. Yeah. I think Boss Baby starts like that and all these offshoot fucking animated movies that don't respect that kids can understand Plots. images. Yeah. And don't need to be like explained everything. Yeah, it's like the f- just sometimes it's what it's like in the comics. It's like, dude, I can see the image. Like you don't have to like word for word explain what's happening. Like just have yeah. trust that we're not idiots. Anyway. Exactly. Did we? I watched no, Gifted. Don't worry. Oh, you did. Yes. Yeah. Um, Where he's a father. Yes. <laughs> and he Chris runs. Evans is, I'm a father. Look at me go. No, uh, directed by Mark Webb and written by Mark Webb. And, our um, favorite. Our favorite director. He's done a couple of good movies. Yeah, no, Gifted is one of them. I really enjoyed it. Actually, I cried a lot during that movie. Yeah. Um, I die? just, I don't know. It was, I, I really liked it. It's just like a, like a really like simple story about a complicated yeah. relationship. It's Goodwill Hunting for about a kid. About a kid. Yeah, it is. And Chris Evans does a really good job in it. And. Yeah, I don't know. Do you like the bit where he adopted all those cats? Yeah, I love that bit. To be euthanized. Oh, my God. That made me so happy. But then you don't see the cats ever again, so I'm like, why did he take those? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) He took them and buried them. (laughs) That'd be depressing. (laughs) No. Drowned them in a lake. He probably just let them free in the caravan park, which is just as bad because it's just like creating a problem in the wildlife. But, hey, look, we're not going to think about that right now. Um, The little girl actress is really good. She's so charming. Who who is she? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Her character's name is Mary, though. So um, I'm pretty sure she's somebody. I've not seen her in any other movies, so yeah, she looks like like a, a daughter or a younger sibling of another actress or yeah. something. Yeah, probably really not, good. but yeah, I guess I could look it up. 
She, yeah, she was great. And I just love like the emotional connection between those two actors, like Chris Evans and that little girl, because I feel like that'd be something hard to do, right? Like even like when you've, have you seen The Room with Brie Larson and... The Room. Oh, no, Room, sorry. <laughs> Fuck. I didn't mean The Room. I meant Room. Yeah. Yeah, it's that kind of thing where it's like, how do you explain to a young kid this very complicated concept that they have to then internalize and then act out? You know what I mean? Like yeah. these like really complicated relationships and situations like must be so hard to do. I can't even do that. And I'm like 21 years old. So yeah, props to to her. Yeah, this little girl's been in a bunch of stuff. She's been in Captain Marvel. I, Tonya. Oh, Captain Marvel. Ready Player One, oh, Independence she plays Day young Two. Captain Marvel. I, yeah, I believe so. Mm. And the Angry Birds movie, but oh. don't need to talk about that one. Wait, can I see a picture of her real quick? Oh, hang on, I already got out of it. Oh, sorry. Her name is M- McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace, that's right, yeah. Wait, when I clicked on her, it didn't come up with a picture. Oh, that's I know it did. Um. Oh, she looks like Ken and Shipka. That's who, who she looks like. Um, Sabrina. The teenage witch. The the Netflix Sabrina, she looks like Donald Draper's daughter, uh, in Mad mm. Men. Her name's Kin and Shipka. I can't think of what else she's in. Um, besides that and and Sabrina. But no, that's who she looks like. She looks okay. like a young version of her. Anyway. I'll take your word. All right, cool. Anything yep. else? <laughs> You she looks watch. like the girl from Sabrina. I took your word. I didn't tell you to spit it back out again. I just want you to know how like dumb you sound. Was this, this podcast cancelled? <laughs> I'm cancelling this podcast. I haven't seen Sabrina. I watched half of one, the first episode, and I fell asleep. So I haven't attempted to watch it after that. That's sad. I like like witches though, like the concept of like. Do you like the film The Witches? Yes. Starring, not starring, written by Roald Dahl. Yes. Do you like Matilda? Yes. That's is that about witches? I don't know. No. I think that's just about like a, a, a mean lady. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not. It's not about the mean lady. It's about Spider Man Two. Yeah. It's a movie you I like watched- a lot. And I watched it a few a times this week. A few times. Look, it's not my fault that I felt like watching it again. And then I found out in the Blu-ray there's three commentary tracks. Okay, there's three. There's a cast and crew one. There's uh, a writer and producer one. And there's a technical one. So Which you know one what? Didn't you watch? I won't watch the technical one yet because I watched a lot of the behind the scenes where all the technical stuff yeah. talked about anyway. So I'll leave that for later. Yeah. And one of the commentary tracks was the extended edition, so it's kind of not the exact same thing, you know? Mm. So I watched it twice and the extended edition. 2.1 it's called. Nice. Uh, what, what's, there, what's there to say about Spider-Man 2 that I haven't said already? <laughs> it's fantastic. It's the reason movies exist. It's the reason movies should continue to exist. And I think Sam Raimi... Ruined superhero movies by making one that's too good because no other superhero movie has topped it. I love I'm sorry. making movies. I love being in them. I love watching them. I it's love Keanu. I know, I'm just like, I don't know. I just felt like that was a good response to what you just said. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 what was I was going to say? But rewatching it, I started to notice like little imperfections that I didn't notice before. Like there's a shot of Tobey Maguire just standing in the street. But when I was watching, I was like, he's blue screened onto the street. <laughs> now you have to watch the technical commentary. No, I already found out why this is oh. when I watched the Sam Raimi one. I listened to the Sam Raimi one, sorry. Because I was like, wow, that's, that's weird. It looks like he's blue screened there, but he's on the street. They already shot him on the street, like. But apparently Sam Raimi just wanted like a closer, tighter shot of his face at oh, that part. Oh, okay, yeah. So they blue screened him like in a closer shot and they just comped him over the over footage the they already shot. shot. Yeah. Looks fine though. Like I don't think anyone yeah, don't else think notices that <laughs> except me because I watched it over and over again. <laughs> That's cool. And little things like the blue screen glow on some of the actors sometimes. 
which is hard to remove probably back then if you didn't have the lighting all proper on set. Yours. Like the bit with the burning building and it's the little girl had blue screen glow around her because they can't put a little girl in a burning in building. In a burning building or anywhere near fire for that Yeah, matter. that would be very dangerous. It's interesting on the behind the scenes finding how, how they did all the fire stuff. Like it was all real mostly. What? Yeah. Really? Or they, like the shot of him running into the building. Yeah, they that's did a, real. Yeah, they did a bit where like there's a little bit of fire around, but they had a motion controlled um, camera rig. Oh, so they didn't have to be like in the fire or anything. Yeah, so they got Toby to run in when it was like a little bit of fire, so it'd still get the lighting and everything right. But not with like a huge flame. Yeah, and then they redid the shot with more fire, so it looks like it's really like a burning building. Nice. And the burning building was done on a Universal Studios back lot. It was cool. There's a whole, there's so much effort put into this movie just for the most like small scenes or minute details, which mm. I find pretty cool. Like the way they had to fireproof that whole thing and not do CGI because they had to rebuild the whole building so it would be made of fireproof yeah. stuff because it wouldn't just crumble. That would have been expensive. Yeah, and they had to build the whole Doc Ox pier set, mm. which took them 15 weeks. Oh, my God. Some films don't even get, like, that much to I film. I know. They had to like, halt filmings just so they yeah. could build that set. And it worked out in the end, didn't it? It looked pretty good. Weeks. That's a long time. Yeah. Because it's a whole – it's a proper, like, structure and everything. Yeah. And it's a shame that when these movies are done, they just take it down and, like, throw it all out. Yeah. But it's like, what else would you do with that set, <gasps> really? At least with Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm pretty sure they melted down all the metal for, you know, the jail set. Yeah. And – like got their money back for a lot of it or something. Oh, really? They melted it all back down or like sold yeah. it back to the... Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know the specifics. Reuse, reduce, recycle, kids. Uh, so did I, I had another thought about Spider-Man 2 real quick. Oh, yeah, the you know the shot of the paper clip that flies towards um, oh, Doc yeah, Ock's machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently <laughs> that took so long to film because oh, really? they wanted to do it practical for some reason. What? How would they- Ever would they do they that? They had it on a string and they had to pull it like in the right way. That it looked and then like the focus puller was probably like, <laughs> yeah, like a magnetic force yeah. pulling it. And Jeez. probably it took them just like way too long, like so many takes just to pull that thing. But then again, it's like it's a shot you remember, even though it's not a a big moment, you know. Would you say? I mean, you knew what it was, and you haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's rug. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, I don't know. Isn't it, I, I mean, as a filmmaker, you make decisions like that, right? Yeah. And most of the time I feel like a filmmaker would be like, oh, it's, who cares, like small detail or this shot, uh, we won't worry about it then. But I think it's really cool that they decided to, like, go full full out and just, like, yeah. they had, and not only that, they had the trust from, like, the producers and stuff to, like, do stuff like that. And they had the freedom to, which is really cool. Because yes. the, the more stuff you can do on set is less time in post-production. Because mm. you have that whole day allocated to filming anyway. Mm. And as long as you don't go over time, it's like if you can solve it on set, it's like it makes it a lot, look a lot better and easier for the effects people to focus on the big stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which is why that CGI shot of Doc Ock at the end looks so good still. His... his- Oh, my God. What is it called? His face. His face. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I literally forgot the word face for a second there. It's okay. Yeah. I've done worse on this podcast, I think. <laughs> Got you. Got you. <laughs> yeah, so I meant to. Yeah. We'll do a commentary of it sometime, won't we? Soon, hopefully. Uh, when should we do it? Right now. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's commentary track for the Peter Palmer podcast. Uh, we're watching Spider Man Two this week, and uh, you're not going okay, along press with it. Play <laughs> one, two, three. Play. Okay, got Columbia. Logos. Yep, more logos. Columbia Pictures presents. Oh, the web is coming down. In association with Marvel Entertainment. This is the only person in the room that can actually... A Sony Pictures presentation. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, like, I can't do this. But... Spider-Man 2.1.
Oh, Two we're doing one. the extended edition. Wow. Yeah. How long is we going to oh, yeah, I, I probably should have talked about the extended edition more than the actual movie. <laughs> Did you watch the extended edition? Yeah, because there's more to talk about with that. Yeah, because it was with the, the writer's commentary. Yeah. Uh, a, few, a few things to point out. Uh, I, under, I liked the original cut a lot better, the theatrical cut, just because things flow a lot better. Yeah. Like some scenes, they get drawn out too long or it's just awkward and it's like dead air. Yeah, gotcha. You know what I mean? Like well, the pizza makes, time yeah. bit. Where he's oh, like, yeah. There's a whole probably extra two minutes to that scene. What? Of really? him like fumbling around like through the closet being like, oh, oh oops. <laughs> and then like he's got web stock on his hand. He's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and it's drawn out a lot longer. And then when he delivers the pizzas and she's like, I'm not paying for those. He's like. And he goes back towards like the janitorial closet where he came in because he was Spider-Man. Obviously, I need to change. Yeah. And Zoe Deschanel, not Zoe Deschanel, <laughs> Emily Deschanel is like, um, why are you going that way? And he's like, oh, okay, sorry. And he goes to the elevator. So it's just like e- extended bits pretty much. Yeah. And there's also a bit where he sees the doctor where they're having bants. But the two main things that added was Jameson wearing the Spider-Man suit, which I wish oh was still God. in the movie. Oh, my God. I wish that was in the movie. Because that's such a good scene. <laughs> Amazing. Because I like the whole subtext in these movies that Jameson, like, secretly... Wants to be. Or yeah, secretly admires... Mm. Sp- oh, yeah, wishes he had the spotlight like mm. him. Yeah, wants to be the kind of center of attention. And- Jameson's an interesting character. Because I remember in the first movie where, like, um, he treats Peter Parker like shit. But then when James... Um, not Jameson. Green Goblin comes in as, like... Wait, who takes photos of Spider-Man for the Bugle? He's like, oh, I don't know. I, as he just sends his stuff in the mail. I, I've never met him before. Like he covers for Peter Parker, yeah, and doesn't just give him up. Mm. I find it interesting because mm. he expects him to just be like, oh, he's, he's right there. Just go after him mm. and be selfish. Yeah, and I feel like he's kind of like that in the comics too. There, he has this like front where he's like very brash and outwardly angry, but there's like a side of him that's scared and cares you know what i mean i think that's why he's so yeah. brash and so outwardly like horrible is because he's trying to like put on a like a facade and stuff yeah yeah and i like that jameson stuff is tied into the plot as well and that's because mm. he's obviously the father of mj's fiance mm. mm-hmm. so whenever it cuts to the daily bugle it's still focused on the story because he's getting exactly. phone calls from his wife like planning the wedding and stuff and he's like <laughs> What, why are we ordering a caviar? What are we inviting the czar? <laughs> <laughs> and that that pays off at the end. Yeah. When they're at the wedding and Jay doesn't arrive. And it comes to Jameson. He's like, call Deborah. Tell her to open the caviar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's good writing, man. That's great. Anyways, comic yes. segment now, unless you had more no, stuff to No, I only watched Gifted this week. Yeah. So. Spidey recap of the week. It's the comics that we read. Week to week, two of them. I did one, Sammy did the other one. Here you it have is. the first comic this week, my dude. Hello, yes I do. Uh, where am I? Issue 73 of The Amazing Spider-Man. Okay. I hope... <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's called The Web Closes. Yep. Yep, that's what it's called. Featuring the sensational Man Mountain Marco. Who we've never heard of. And do we care? I don't know. I want to know if it's Flint Marco, the Sandman. It's not. I would say. No, because there's two Sandmen. And I don't Uh, think we knew who the first Sandman was. Oh. Uh, Oh. I've got the second issue and I haven't heard anything like that yet. Oh, he might not be Sandman yet. Not yet. He oh, I get what you He mean. hasn't ran into a facility and accidentally... What was that sand experiment in Spider-Man 3? Do people just do that? Just whip up sand in a, a little, little twirly twirl? Sorry, what are you talking about? Spider-Man 3. You know that science experiment where they're yeah. doing the sand? What was that? What were they experimenting? They were testing um, molecular stuff. I don't really know exactly. Molecular stuff. Something on the molecular level... I don't really understand. It's all pseudoscience anyway, so. Yeah, it's Does not it explained. Really matter? Yeah. I love how you just run, like, I don't know, 
Spider Man. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's looking at Captain Stacy on his deathbed or something because he got beaten up by the shocker. And Gwen Stacy's like, "Oi, Dad, you're all right." And yeah, whatever. Sp- <laughs> Spider Man swoops in when Gwen leaves. He's like, "Captain Stacy, don't be alarmed. I've got to ask you about the tablet." Oh, God, here we go. The shocker stole it or something. Steal the tablet. We're still on with the tablet, and Captain Stacy's like, well, why are you so interested in that, uh, Spider-Man? And Sp- Spider-Man is like, oh, there's still some diehards like J. Jonah Jameson who I think had a hand in stealing it. <gasps> so the only way I can really clear myself is to find the tablet again and return it. And Captain Stacy's like, oi, oi, wait, I just remembered something. The shocker used to have a girlfriend. She paid his bail once or twice. Oh, what okay, better place true. to hide the tablet than with her? And Spider-Man's like, talk faster, man. It's getting cold out here. Oh, that's me. <laughs> My toes. Cold toes. Yeah, and Captain Stacy's like, uh, she used to be in show business, and she lives somewhere on the west side near the theater district. And Spider-Man's like, all right, see ya. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll go find her. <laughs> but then when he's swinging, he's like, oh, what? I didn't even ask, like, what her name is, uh, like, specifics of, like, what she looks like and all this stuff. Yeah. But he's like, oh, well, I've got my spidey sense, so I'll be able to find her anyway. All right, Just by well, swinging around aimlessly. Okay. And, like, keep in mind, New York is a huge fucking place. Like- uh, but he's he's been given, like, an area. So he's okay. just been swinging around the theater is district. That like a, is that, like, not a music in a video game? Like when they're like, find this person, you got to use like your special senses. Yeah, like, like the marker yeah. is on the map. It's like, this is where you're meant to be, but it's like, I can't find yeah, where. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're like, what? Where's the entrance? Yeah. <laughs> Which door am I meant to open? Yeah. yeah it's like that. But his party senses go off eventually. And he's like, oh, gee, I found something. Maybe something's gone on in here. And we see man, the, mo- the mountain Marco, whatever his name is. The man, the myth. Let's call him Triple M. Triple M, yeah, that's a good one. And uh, he's barging into the shocker's girlfriend's house. He's like, "Eh, man, Martin Marco, (laughs) don't add the believe nothing, sister. Uh, (laughs) The Maggie is top brass. Guy are finding these things out, see? And they say the shocker stashed that hunk of stone here with you. And he's taunting this woman, breaking all her shit for no Aww. reason. He snaps a chair in half. A really nice looking chair, to be honest. Kind of looks like a clamshell. And Spider-Man breaks in. He's like, hold it, big man. Haven't you heard about inflation? Because he probably said something about... Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I missed a line where he probably said something about money or something. Inflation? You ever heard of inflation? <laughs> Uh, anyways, oh no, he said not, uh, sorry, there was a second line that if I just kept reading, it would make sense. Do you know what it costs to upholster a chair nowadays? Cause he ripped the chair. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's like, wait, that chair is expensive by today's standards. Oh, okay. Cause okay. it was a nice chair and it, but it's an older, nice chair. Oh, so Something inflation like that. would affect, okay. I see what you mean. He thinks out these gags in advance. Yeah. That's why he takes so long to make a dramatic entrance. Like, oh, what do I say? What do I say? <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> I want like a, the after credit scenes of far from home. Spotty likes digging into like something <laughs> happening. And he's like, before he's like, all right, what do I say? What's my clever thing? Are you speaking? Then he goes, Hello. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> My name is Jeff. <laughs> I do like they kind of did that in Homecoming though, when he goes into the bank and he's like. Oh yeah. He's like. Um, like leaning up yeah. against the wall. He's like, uh, hey, hey guys, hey how's guys. it going? Yeah. True. Something like that. Mm. Um, people always say uh, that the Toby Spider-Man didn't do many quips, but Tom Holland's one doesn't really either. It was Andrew that did all the quips. Yeah. Yeah. But no one complains about, I guess Tom does do quips, but they're not very good. Yeah. Like he says like, oh, the Avengers, nice to meet you guys. Like it's not really quips, is it? It's more like Peter just being like, oh my God, my personality. This is my personality. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Garfield one had pretty bad quips as well, to be honest. Oh yeah. What was the one where he was like, Trying to find Uncle Ben's killer, and it was like the car. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> my weakness is small knives. <laughs> you knives, you burn my weakness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but everyone loves that scene. Everyone does. Everyone loves it. Because it's scene. the first time in cinema we got to see Spider Man making quips like he does in the comic books. 
That's what this <laughs> Mark Webb Spider-Man gets right. It takes us back to the comic book roots. They gave him web shooters. We'd never seen that on a film before. That makes it a good <laughs> movie. Great right movie. We had Gwen Stacy, okay? Gwen, Gwen Stacy. <laughs> don't bang the oh, yeah, table. True, yeah. Gwen Stacy was... Peter's first love in the comics. They oh, meet in yeah. high school. That's why they did it in the movies. Not true. <laughs> not true. Absolutely not true, okay? There was at least like 40 issues or something before Gwen Stacy. Maybe not that many, but there was there quite was a, a bit. There was a few. There was a good damn yeah, few. Yeah, it was until he went to college. Mm. Yeah, they didn't meet until college, man. I don't get this whole thing of uh, people demanding that they want Spider-Man in high school, like in movies. Even though Spider-Man being in high school is such a small portion of Spider-Man's entire Literally. history. And it's barely any portion of – because in the comic books, he's never at school. Like He's yeah. like always like, oh, shit, I better go in for one class. And he goes and everyone roasts him and then he has to do something for Spider-Man like, or does a Spider-Man thing. Yeah, I don't think the appeal of Spider-Man is necessarily that he's in high school. It's yeah. that he's – Every like he's the every man. He yeah, deals yeah. with the same problems people do. Exactly. Like he's not exempt from those rules just because he's a superhero. Not like Tony Stark where he's like – Oh, I'll, just, I'll just donate yeah. money to fix my problem and stuff like that. Not like Captain America was just like, well, you know, I'm from another era anyway, so. Yeah, Captain America's, <laughs> it's funny how in the old comics he's like, I've been frozen for 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. <laughs> it keeps extending as yeah. the, the years go on and on. Exactly. Because it's st- always World War Two that he was in. Yeah. So in the current comics now he's, yeah, he's still the same continuity but. Do you think if they ever reboot Captain America, they'll keep that? Like, because he has to, like, it's yeah. World War Two is like pretty, like, because it, it, it's what the Red Skull and everything. And yeah, yeah. exactly. So it has to be World War Two. I found out recently they they retconned like when Peter Parker's birthday is in the comics. Like he's born in the nineties, oh. apparently. Like in the current timeline. Oh, they changed it to the nineties. Yeah, I don't kind know of when fits this happened. That like age. But when I was I was looking up uh, when Peter Parker's birthday is because I didn't mention this when I was watching Spider Man Two I got bored and I started counting oh, yeah. how many days it takes place across <laughs> yeah and I was like okay it starts on Peter's birthday when is his birthday I couldn't find an answer on Google okay. for when it is in Spider Man Two oh okay but for the comics but in the comics yeah, yeah it's retcon the nineties yeah I think it's August or something in the comics <gasps> is he a Leo or a Virgo August ten. He's a Leo. Because I think they've made it when mm. the first issue of the comic came out. Okay. That's just his birthday. So Peter Parker's a Leo? I find that so hard to believe. Also, Tom Holland, Peter Parker, has the same birthday as that. Oh, really? Yeah, because you see it. He's in his, a Leo? You see it on his passport mm. in the trailer. Zodiac people out there who, like, care about star signs, what's your opinion on this? I came to the conclusion that Toby's Spider-Man was born in April. What does that make him? It either makes him a say like mid April, an Aries or a um or a Taurus, which is what I am. Okay, I want to say so, like late April. Late April, so then he's yeah. a Taurus. Okay, which is cool. Oh my god, that's that makes me so happy. I figure this out because Raimi trilogy is a Taurus. Yeah, in in the film, Aunt May says it'll be two years next month since Uncle Ben was killed. Mm-hmm. In the first movie, Uncle Ben was killed, uh, it's, I want to say like a couple of weeks before his high school graduation, or maybe a few days. Mm-hmm. And high school graduation in America is usually at like start of June. Okay. Because they go on summer holidays. Oh, okay. So you've kind of determined when his birthday is. Yeah. So it's like. So like end of April? Yeah. It has to be yeah. a month. Well, it's yeah, mm-hmm. the month before May. The month sometime, before May. Sometime so April. in April. Yeah, well, he's depending on what exact. I'd have to know what exact day, but or maybe it is yeah, May. He, he may be in Aries. I if feel Uncle, like Aries makes more sense for him, though. Maybe Uncle Ben got killed at the start of June. Yeah, and Spider-Man was born. Uh, it's like May, early May. I really do feel like though, if I were to guess, like for either Taurus or Aries for Raimi or Toby, um, Spidey, he'd definitely be an Aries. I don't see okay. him as a Taurus, so. Fair enough. I see yeah. that. Yeah. What would MJ be? A Gemini? No, uh, Leo or Virgo. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I That makes a lot of sense in my brain for some reason. Kirsten Dunst is good. Yeah, she's great. 
Anyway. Where am I? Well, I'm still in that inflation. Okay, yeah. Well, How'd we get to there from yeah. inflation? <laughs> yeah, we went on a real big tangent there. That's great. Anyway, Spider-Man fights Triple M and, yeah, he's pretty much like, okay, lady, uh, okay, where, lady. Where's, where's that tablet? It's got to be in here somewhere. If you just give it to me, all these troubles will be over and uh, we'll stop bashing up your house. <laughs> he doesn't say that. But... Uh, this lady is, is all, all scared. She's not really saying much. Mm-hmm. But Triple M, a Spider-Man, like, threw him against the wall and thought he knocked him out. But Triple M, he don't go down that easy. And he gets up and he's like, hmm, he thought I'd be out for good. Well, at least he's got a lot to learn about man, Martin, <laughs> man, 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 Mountain Marco's Ma- man Martin. power. <laughs> Wait, does he have six fingers? No, okay, oh, wait, no, he on. doesn't. Don't worry. Um, Remember when I thought my tattoo had six fingers? That was a I, mean, fun. I don't want to say it does. It, it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. No. Uh, I checked. Anyway, Triple M smacks Spidey with the half of the chair that he ripped or something. And then Stanley's like, well, anyways, let's cut to something else that's a lot less interesting. Mm. Because the jail cell, these people are talking about uh, how the Kingpin stole the tablet. And Spider-Man got it and the shocker now who knows where it is. And they were like, well, maybe we're fools to work for the Kingpin. And uh, this, this, what do you yep. call it? Look, the jail guard? The jail guard comes by and he's like, Oi. The warden? No. So, uh, someone. Yeah. But he, he takes them out of the, yeah, he takes this guy called Wilson. I don't know. It's not Wilson Fisk, some other Wilson. And he takes them out to meet with this dude named Cicero. Caesar Cicero. 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 I've got to say it in an Italian accent. Cicero. Cicero. <laughs> Basically, the, the deal here is um, they're, they're trying to find out the location of this tablet so they're recruiting all the, the crime people that have knowledge about where it could be and yeah or something like that it's really boring dude i can't yeah <laughs> i'm like literally trying so hard to pay attention right now but you know something there's it's the magia the fake mafia they want the tablet yeah they're not they're the gonna, mafia they're, they're gonna the look magia. for it that's about it then we cut back to spider-man still fighting triple m and triple m finds the safe where the tablet's hidden he tries to rip it open, but Spider-Man to stop him. They punch, they punch, they lack to munch. Uh, Triple M gets the tablet and he's like, yes, I got he. Got he. And uh, Spider-Man's Sorry, all down, down in the dump. <laughs> oh, got he. Got he. I haven't seen it, but I've seen I've enough. I've some bad things. <laughs> uh, there's a very funny video on it that I think encapsulates what um, all the bad stuff is about it, so I don't really have to watch it anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> he is a man down in the dumps, but just as the fight's about to get interesting, we cut to Robbie Robertson and Randy serving the same argument from the other comics. Oh, God. And for some reason, the color is fucked up and yeah. these they're gray. Oh, yeah. What yeah, the It's hell? not even like a brownie gray, it's gray. They're like legit gray. Like if you like went outside, like sort of stone. Rock. Yeah, like tombstone gray. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if that's racist on the colorist's behalf or if they're colorblind. But if that's the case, they shouldn't be a colorist. No, they should Quite frankly. Quite, Actually, yeah. it would be interesting to have a colorblind colorist. Maybe interesting things could happen out of that. Hmm. Like very specific color palettes. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Because colorblind people don't just see black and white. No, they see like colors as like... They see spectra, different spectrums of colors. Yeah. So, like, they're limited to only, like, blue shades or green shades, like, for example. Like, that's yeah, a bad The most example. common one yeah. I've known and people I've met that colorblind is, like, they see, they see everything as shades of yellow and purple. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah. But to them, that would just be normal. Yeah. And be, like, Hell? imagining if there were more colors than what we see now. You know? No, I can't. That's exactly, yeah. yeah. But so Spider, not Spider Man, Robbie and Randy, they're having a whole debate over like 
Randy is an activist. He's saying to his dad, like, we should fight to be equals to the white man's establishment, dad. And Robbie Robertson's like, well, it's all right, son. I know you want to be very vocal and that's what the kids these days do, but, you know, we have to stand our ground and, you know, we have to be patient or something like that. We've got to wait for change to happen. And we can't make it happen, son. Yeah. Then Jameson comes in and yells at them. <laughs> cool. But then this makes uh, Randy say, like, look, this guy's a racist, Dad. You're going to take that shit from him? And Rob, Robbie's like... Wait, Jameson's not a racist. He's <laughs> he's just a blowhard with a hang-up about Spider-Man. Just because he's white doesn't make him a racist. This is what Robbie says, mm. a.k.a. Stan Lee. <laughs> he's like, look, I'm, I'm an ally, I swear, but also I'm not racist. <laughs> just while someone's in the room, just be like, hey, that guy's a racist. <laughs> Anyways, Shocker's girlfriend's getting dropped out a window by Triple M. Nice. And Spider-Man has to dive out and catch her just in the nick of time. And while he does this, uh, Triple M gets away with the tablet. whoop de doo And we see these other crime people again that we were talking about before who are also looking for the tablet. And we see this dude called the Silver Mane. He's kind of like a Kingpin type while Kingpin's in prison. Yeah. He's an old guy. Yeah, he looks like a gorilla. I think that's probably the idea. Mm. He's got gorilla-like features. He's not black. He's white. I just want to clarify that. Mm. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I see where you're going. Yeah. So Caesar Cicero, whatever the fuck his name is, is talking to Silverman. And Silverman's pissed because he's like, Oi, I want the, the tablet. Where is it? But then Triple M comes in because he's probably working with these guys too. He's like, I got the tablet. Look at me. I'm the best. I'm the greatest of all time. That <laughs> accent too. <laughs> Silverman's like, uh, that's pretty neat, isn't it? You've done well, Marco. But I knew you would not fail me. And then Silverman's like, so what makes that crumb, crummy hunk of rock so valuable, Silverman? And they have the analyst in, and he's like, oh, it's ancient. It's the sacred texts oh, and stuff like that. The sacred texts. And then, yeah, whatever. Who cares? We see Spider-Man on a porch. Not a porch, on a chimney. And he's like, oh, no, I let another guy get away with the tablet. Oh, I'm really shit at this, aren't I? And he's like, oh, wait, my spider sense is tingling. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he, he, he didn't hear spider sense tingling. That was me making that up. Uh, he's like, I'm going to just head home because I'm fucking knackered. And we see a panel where Spider-Man's spider isn't drawn on him. They forgot to draw it on, but that's okay. Drawing for comics oh, is that's hard. that's right, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he calls up Dr. Curtis Connors. And he's pretty much like, um, why is he calling Dr. Connors? You'll You'll see. You'll see. Okay. Oh, he wants to get a summer job with him. Sorry. So he calls him up, but his wife answers. He's like, what? Uh, where, where's the doc? And she's pretty much like... Dead. Um, <laughs> he, he just left unexpectedly with a couple men who who haven't, I haven't seen before. And Peter's like, this is really fucking fishy, in it? Uh, what if he turns into the lizard again? He knows the danger in case someone something should go wrong again. And Spider-Man's, oh, just Peter Parker being a sook. He's like, I wonder who those two men were that took Connors. I wonder what the hell is going on. We find out what's going on. We see the silver man. And he's saying, like, hey, you want a secret? the secret of the tablet? I just took a, a phone call to one of our boys down south, Dr. Curtis Connors. Ooh. And they bring him into the silver man. Silver man's like, oi, uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Good job on doing that. And then Curtis Connors is like, the Magia, what do you want with the me? The Magia. Look, I'm just a dime a dozen research scientist from the Everglades. I don't know what you're after, but you grabbed yourself the wrong man. And Silverman's like, you underestimate yourself, Doctor. You're just what we need. And Connors is like, but you can't keep me here. It's not safe. 
This woman's like, is that a fact, eh? What's, what why is it? Why are you so sure about what, what, what is? Why wouldn't this be safe, huh? What, which, what kind of fun, funny business are you trying to pull? And we see into Connor's head, he's thinking about the lizard and he's like, I can't answer that. Ah, oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gang. Comic over. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I'm about to be sorry. Gabag <laughs> be sorry. <laughs> so I got issue 74 of The Amazing Spider-Man this week. Um, <laughs> when picking between who's going to read what, what this week, I just picked this best off the cover because I liked it better. So thank you, go. Very um, good. Does it continue the tablet saga? Of course it does. Of course. Why iOS or it? Android? Huh? Don't worry. I made a terrible joke. Just skim over Android. it and keep talking. There you go. You're going to have to. Android. <laughs> Android. Android Garfield. So, <laughs> these, um, issue 74 Amazing Spider Man's called If This Be Bedlam. We've got like a dramatic, like, I don't know, movie poster esque, like, front page and it's got like a big um portrait of the lizard as in his lizard form in the back while triple m is grabbing this grunt by the collar and he's like you better do what silvermane wants see even if you don't care about yourself remember we also invited your wife and kid up here to come keep you company um curtis connors i mean that's the grunt that he's shaken by the collar and uh, Silvermane's like, Marco, you must not harm him. The Magia has much use for Dr. Connors. Is this Dracula speaking? Yes. <laughs> or is Marco, it... if you injure okay. him, he'll be useless to us. He seems like the kind of way that would interrupt people. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Dracula does that too. And yeah. The, you ever seen the hit film Dracula? No. It's, it's bad. Oh, the old no, it's one. not bad. It's just like because. Is that it... the one starring the guy from that place, Count Dooku? I no, this is like the orig- the OG. Oh, okay, one. the yeah. old old one. Uh, okay. It's it's boring in the fact that anytime a p- a bit of conflict happens in the film, it cuts away to the next day, oh. and you don't see it. That's really. I remember awful. the whole time I was like, "This is Dracula movie, we don't see any like stuff happen in it." There's people going like, e, oh, this Dracula dude's real bad, isn't he? Oh, he's coming in right now. Then we don't see it. <laughs> That's like, it, on. the end of the scene. The I don't remember specifics because it was boring and left Question, is Count, the guy who plays Count Duke, is he dead? Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Died a little while ago. Yeah, I do remember that, but I wasn't sure if I dreamt that or not. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bride of Frankenstein, on the other hand, very good. Mm. Watch that instead of Dracula. Bride of Frankenstein, yeah. okay. Or The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man I've seen, which is, I like The Invisible Man. I like good. it, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Um, my dad made me watch it when I was young, so there you go. Pretty good visual effect, isn't it? Mm. Even when I watched it recently, I was like... Yeah. It's like, pretty crazy. Mm. They, they did that all, like... Back in the day, yeah. Yeah. I However can't. they did that, I can't remember ex- exactly. I can't fathom, honestly. I remember I saw, like, how they did it once, but I forget. Anyway, so back to the comic. Um, what comic? What comic? Issue 74 of The Amazing Spider-Man on Marvel Unlimited. What? <laughs> what? No way. No way. So, yeah, um, basically Triple M's like, get out of my way, old man. I'll rough him up as much as I want. But um, Silver Mane just is like walks up to Triple M. Silver like, Manger. Silver Manger, yeah. Silver, walks up to him, full G, fucking bitch slaps him across the face. Like, you think you ought to speak to some cheap street corner hood. I may be old, but I am still leader here. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty cool. He just slaps him across the face and puts him in his place. And uh, Triple M's like, I'll take him in the face, put, put him, him in, in his place. place. Um, so Triple M's like, all right, you didn't have to shame me in front of anybody, but I get it. And he like, he's kind of embarrassed. Anyway, seconds later, um, the leader of the Magia, Silvermane's like, you know, the pain subsided, but we've lost too much time. The pain from slapping him, by the way. Um, they start okay. to discuss, um, what's, what he has him for and like what his task is. Please, that is my lip balm. Do not <laughs> do weird things to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Anyway, so he shows him the lab and he goes, this is where I'm going to leave you with the tablet and you're going to have to decipher it. Um, I need you to unlock its secrets, yada, yada, yada. And Dr. Connor's like, this is not a good idea, man. Um, and you're not safe here with me. 
you know, the whole spiel. And he starts thinking about, um, um, you know, how stressed out this all, the fucked up this all is basically. And he starts turning into the lizard. Um, then he's like, no, I well, must I'm the lizard. <laughs> I'm the lizard. Um, he starts <laughs> What that? Uh, Thinking about is that something we've said before? Because it sounds familiar, but I don't know why we would have said yes, that. Yes, I know. Oh, I'm right. the lizard. Sounds like I don't know. I mean, he hasn't been played by an Australian man. No, he hasn't. As far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Um, he played by a British guy though. In the Amazing Spider-Man. Two. No. One. Yes. Blast off. <laughs> Martha and Billy. He's not thinking about his wife and kid, Martha and Billy, and he concentrates on them and it lets the kind of lizard juices subside so he's not turning into lizard anymore. Sometime later in another part of the city, we see a, um, a web grabbing a newspaper and a dime dropping on the newspaper stand. What? And, of course, it's Spider-Man who just bought the paper in Cognito. What a schmuck. He works for the newspaper. He can't even... <laughs> He yeah. still has to pay. pay for the newspaper. What a I mean, schmuck. Um, I guess when you work at places, you still have to buy um, stuff there. Yeah, you don't I just mean, get free things. The most I get at my work is free posters. So, yeah. I mean, the less I know, the better, as they say. Oh, yeah. Remind me to get you that poster before we go. What? Um, oh, that poster. Yeah. So that makes it sound like, oh, that poster. No, it's a Spider Man poster. That poster. Like, <laughs> <"Bleh." laughs> <laughs> Buggy. <laughs> yeah. Shipping. Shipping. Um. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and that was cool. You should be a foley artist. There we go. Um. So Spider Man's reading the paper, and he noticed the headline. Um. Is about not the headline. Sorry, there's an article in that. It's about Kingpin's crime lieutenant bailed out by Magia lawyer, and he's like. It's Caesar Cicero, the big time Magia mouthpiece um, that's uh, bailed out Kingpin. But why? I remember Marco saying it was a Magia that tip that led him to, to the tablet. And so if the syndicate's mis- mixed up in this, then Caesar Cicero is the leader I want. His office is just below as he swings towards a building. And he sees, he peers into the window and sees that he's just put his coat on and he's about to leave. Um, so he's like, oh, I'll get him before, you know, he leaves. And he notices that he's really short. And he's like, why do they call him um, what is the big C? He can't be more than five <laughs> feet tall. Um, so he does his spidey signal in the window and um, sees his sister. I was like, bro, what the hell, Spider-Man? What do you want with me? Just a little conversation, mister. Web swinging around town can make a fella mighty lonely. So how about answering a few simple questions, says Spidey. Um, sees his sister. I was like, questions about what? He, um, he's, you know, really shook. <laughs> And Spider-Man's, would you believe, Man Mountain Marco in a certain stone tablet? And as he's um, intimidating uh, Caesar Cicero, um, Caesar Cicero backs onto his desk and like presses this secret button. So we don't know what that is. But um, Spider-Man get, grabs him by the scruff of his oh, collar. Oh, we know the like, secret button. Oh, we know the secret button. Um, yeah, he Actually, grabs him by the scruff of his collar. Like, now, what did you want to do that for? All that it means... Is to, is you'll have to tell me what I want, but even faster now than ever. Um, He's referring to the button pressing, of course. Um, And he's like, I'm not going to talk, yada, yada, yada. He's like, all you have to do is tell me where to find him. He's like, I can't tell you. And all of a sudden, his spotty senses go off, and he turns around, and the gun's poking through the door, and he's about to shoot him. He gets out of the way just in the nick of time, and it's all his goons that have come up to try and trap him. So he zaps them, cracks them, Bashes them up, um, tips over a bookshelf on one of the dudes, and all these books Ow. come flying everywhere. Like that's kind of messed up. Um, so while this is all happening, Caesar Cicero uh, makes a run for it, and uh, Spidey notices he's missing, so he goes after him. Um, and while he bashes up all these guys, and he webs them up, and uh, he like doesn't catch him uh, in the hallway just before he leaves. But he's like, no, there's too much at stake. For anything to stop me now. And he lifts up the like steel door. It's pretty awesome. I love this. Is, like my favorite bit of the comic. Yucky. Yeah. He like just sheer determination and will lets him open that metal door. Who's Will? Um, but it's too late anyway. <laughs> will. Who's Will? Um, will I am, of course. Will it Smith, of course. Will it blend? That is the question. <laughs> <laughs> will, it, will it Smith? Will it uh, will I am? Will it blend? That is the question. <laughs> What happens to Will I Am? Two guys. 
Yeah, where is he nowadays? He probably, he's guy. probably one of the judges on The Voice or something. Yeah, that sounds about right. It probably is the quiet or one. One of the lower rate ones, like, look who's got a good singing voice today, the, so, the show. Huh? <laughs> None of what you said made sense. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to explain it, but I'm like, once I explain you'd be like, why would you explain that? Why are you <laughs> yeah. telling me this? I'm sorry. Okay. You know how... I'm just mean, okay? I'm just a mean person. I can't help it. I grew up with siblings. We're all mean to each other. That's why. Why? I don't know. Because we're all vying for love from Uh our parents. That's sweet. It's really not because (laughs) we could have just teamed up and like realized that all we need is- Stole all their money. Oh, yeah. Stolen all their money and all we need is each other's love, sibling love. I'm pretty sure that's a plot of a movie. Yeah, it's like the virgin suicides or something like that. Oh, I, I, they all kill themselves at the end. Oh, of course. It's called it's The Virgin Souls. That's not a spoiler. Yeah, it's the title of the movie. I mean, it's like John dies at the end where John didn't die at the end. And I was kind That's of bummed. That's a spoiler. I'm sorry. you got to bleep that out. Anyway, so Spidey makes it to the room and he's like, he hears a um, female's voice and a young teenage boy's voice. And he assumes that it's obviously Connor's family. But all of a sudden, boom, a big bomb goes off. Well, ah. it, yeah, a bomb goes <laughs> off while a car drives away. And um, we realize that Caesar's sister on the car with... What's he doing? Um, Connor's family, Dr. <sighs> Connor's family, and it was a tape recording of their voices, so he tricks Spider-Man. Oh, the good old, good old Home Alone trick. Yeah, exactly. So Spider-Man emerges Black from Widow the Black Widow uses that trick in Winter Soldier and like... Would you really fall for that in this day and age? Yeah, that's right. That's in Winter Soldier. Yeah. And it's on like a phone speaker as well. Yeah. It's like those don't sound convincing. Well, Continue. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Don't be sorry. No, continue. I'm sorry. It okay. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't continue. Um, so, yeah, Spider-Man emerges from the uh, rubble. He's like, lucky I was suspicious enough to stand back. But while I'm busy congratulating myself, Big C managed to make his getaway. And that means Doc Connor's wife and son are still in danger. But sooner or later, I'll t- track Cicero down. And when I do, cut to the headquarters of the man called Silvermane. What? Um, no, we know him. Caesar Cicero walks in and Silvermane's like, this time, Caesar Cicero, you've gone too far. By bringing a captive directly to me, you will never lead, inevitably... Oh, my God. Inevitably lead Spider-Man to this very spot. And Caesar Citra was like, hey, you grow too fearful in your old age, my friend. At any rate, I had no other choice. And uh, Triple M's like, hey, don't worry, man. It's all good. <laughs> he just has some throwaway dialogue. Who cares? Um, and Cicero kind of puts his finger up. He's like, no, I am the old Cicero. The strength has faded from me, but I am still powerful. Just you wait. So um, he barges into the lab and goes, bro, Connor's like, I need that serum now. Like, whatever it is you need to do, I need it, like, ASAP. And Connor's like, you know, there's a reason why um, it's been a mystery so long that language experts ca- couldn't solve this tablet. It's because um, they've been trying to look for a language, but it's actually a biologist's job because it's hieroglyphics that stand for biochemical symbols, not words. And mm. he's like, bro, what are you talking about? And he's you like, fan of phosphorus. It's like the what me? What? <laughs> 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 anyway, so Dr. Connor starts turning into the lizard, but um, Caesar, oh, not Caesar, Cicero, um, Silvermane quickly reminds him about his wife and son and how he needs that serum now or else they're going to, you know, die. And that reverts that kind of symptom of him turning into the lizard. And while we're talking about Dr. Connor's family, we are in a, looks like a jail cell, like a, like a s- sanatorium room that his family are locked in and um, her mom's crying. She's like, oh, no, this is terrible. Um, They're so ruthless and merciless. I don't know what will happen to us and your father. Um, And But there's something wrong with him that no one would ever suspect and they don't know how dangerous he is. But his the son is saying, well, mom, actually, no. Dad's the lizard. And she's like, why, you know? And that's, you know, kind of all that happens there. So Spidey's swinging around town, get, trying to get home after a long day of getting exploded. And um, he finally gets back to his apartment. He's like, you know, I better call Aunt May, but I'm too tired. I better call Gwen, but I'm too tired. I should stay up to say hi to Harry and see what he's doing, but I'm too tired. I'm just going to fall like lyrics. asleep. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Should I call Gwen? 
Should I'm too, too tired. tired. Should I call dum, May? Dum, 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 too dum, tired. Dum. Should I wait up to see Harry? I'm too tired. When I fall right, I was thinking like a rap song. I was thinking like day. an Ed Sheeran, like pseudo oh, rap. rap yeah. I was like, I could have called May, but I'm too tired. I could have called Gwen, <laughs> but I'm too tired. <laughs> Ed Sheeran Should I go talk amazing. to Harry? I'm still too tired <laughs> tonight. Oh my God, how freaky would it be if you like turn on the radio tomorrow, Ed Sheeran's new song, <laughs> I'm Too Tired. <laughs> it's all Spider-Man characters. Yeah. It's like Mumbo number five, but it's like Far from all Spider-Man song. characters. <laughs> Mumbo number five. When I was singing Spider-Man Far From Home in the credits. God, that's the credit song. Oh. That's, that's the shocking reveal. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's what he was talking about, the shocking reveal, Ed Sheeran's and... Um, anyway, yeah, so he falls asleep and then the next morning he's like, well, before I do anything, I should really show up to class before they forget who I am. Um, but you know, he's guilty about it. Cause he's like, how can I do it? If I got to help Doc Connors and his family, he walks past, uh, Robbie, not Robbie Robertson. What's his name? Robbie Robertson's kid. Randy. Randy Robertson and his crew of friends are like, Hey Pete, what's going on? And Pete just walks past them. And one of his friends makes a comment. Oh, is he too good for us? But Randy's like, hey, Parker's okay, man. He don't have to do the rah-rah bit to prove he's got soul. All right. <laughs> and then the most fucked up thing happens in the next panel, and I wish I could, like, peel it from my eyes, but Harry shows up, and he shows Pete his new look. <laughs> Handlebar mustache. He has grown, like, an, like, one of those handlebar mustaches, but it's not like a trucker style. It's more like Oriental style handlebar mustache. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's not, it's a bit patchy. It looks awful. It just looks like he's got whiskers basically. It looks like the lip. first time he's tried to grow out his facial his hair facial and it's hair. all like fluffy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's like, hey roommate, I was hoping I'd see you. Do you like the new Osborne image? And Pete just says, oh, hi, Harry, and starts, like, kind of running, walking away. But he's like, hi, Harry? That's all you had to say to a pal who's sporting his new Fu Manchu face fuzz? Or even called it Fu Manchu <laughs> face fuzz. Yeah, literally. Yeah, Fu. I know, that's so gross. <laughs> I've been hiding for weeks just to grow it. Hey! What? <laughs> As Pete shoves him. Sorry, Harry, can't talk anymore. There's something important that I've got to do, which is literally me in this situation. I'm like, I don't want to look at you. I don't want to talk to you. You've got disgusting facial hair. I'm going. So he runs off before he can even say anything else. And Gwen kind of like says, oh, hi, Harry. And Gwen's like, and Pete, oh, sorry, Harry's like, Gwen, did you see that? I'm beginning to think Flash Thompson's right about this joker. Gwen says, Mm -hmm. then think again, Mr. Mm -hmm. Osborne. The man is uptight. He needs help, not hostility. If you're his friend, then act like one. Gwen, you're awesome. A true friend. And speaking of friendship, Spidey's swinging around the city and trying to save Dr. Connors, um, his, his good friend. So um, he's swinging around town trying to find the HQ and he's just waiting for a spider sense to tingle again like he did last issue. The, um, the plot device yeah, of the Spidey <laughs> sense. Exactly. It's like, oh, well, we don't know how Spider-Man finds this thing. Spidey so sense. So we to swing around for a while and wait, basically. But meanwhile, in the not too distant building is Silvermane. Um, uh, Dr. Connors has got the serum. Silvermane grabs it off him, and Dr. Connors is, Connors is like, No, dude, don't drink it. I haven't tested it yet. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, just be careful. He goes, I don't care. I'm Silvermane. Years ago in my prime, I could have humbled Caesar's sister on dozen like him with one blow, and soon I should be able to do it again. And he gulps it down. Triple M's like, No, don't do it, boys. And, um,. <laughs> He drops the vial, smashes in the ground. None. Uh, uh, Marco. None. Mark. Thump. And he falls to the ground. Marco grabs Dr. Connors. You killed him. You thought it would save you, wouldn't it? But no, it's not going to do you any good. And all of a sudden he hears, Marco, there is no longer huh? any need for your strong arm tactics. No, it can't be, says Marco. He turns around. Silvermane is young again. I have the secret of the fountain of the youth. Next issue, Spotty slams into action as death strikes again. Okay. Boom. Shakalaka. There you go. I, I know like it. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I tried to be enthusiastic about it, but I'm fine. He didn't write that comic. Yeah, no. It was I didn't. Stanley Labor. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this whole mafia thing. I what just- do you think was popular at the time? Do you think this is when, like, 
mob movies and mob shows definitely yeah. and spy stuff was becoming a thing and, yeah. and they're trying to like mash the two things together i guess it's becoming less so. about the whole spider-man weighing his responsibilities against yeah, like literally his, it's all about his like, ambition the scenes are about this stupid like crime it's about this, this crime plot yeah that stolen Joan of Arc or whatever it is. Yeah, that's about the fountain of youth. And then, like, you think it's going to be something amazing, but no, it's just some, like, dude we meet a couple issues ago. And it's yeah. like, all right. Cool. Silver Mane. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Fan mail segment? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, did we get fan mail? We probably didn't. But let's find out right now. Hey. Hello, this is the fan mail segment of the Peter Palmer podcast. Um,. Look, we don't get fan mail. No, not but we by do. Any we do have a very loyal listener by the name of Thomas, who does not fail to tweet us in every week once he listens. Which is great. Which I appreciate that so much. And guess what? We got Thomas tweets this week. Thomas tweets. And he said uh, a few things. He said last week because he live tweets as he listens. Yeah. Uh, and he said, "I'm enjoying this episode lots, boy and girl." I don't know why he called us boy and girl. He's <laughs> like, we have names. Thank you. <laughs> boy and girl. Maybe he, like, had amnesia and he forgot our name. But, yeah. like, the like, first uh, thing that his Google Home does when he wakes up on yeah. Monday is play the Peter Palmer podcast. So he's, like, woke up with amnesia. Then okay, the Peter it's Palmer memento. Pod- <laughs> he's trying to figure out his life. A Peter Palmer podcast starts playing. He's like, what? Midway through, because we say our names yeah. at the start. Yeah, like, yeah. Boy and girl. Boy and girl. It's like when you... You show, um, I don't know, like your parents are maybe with a famous actor, but they don't know the famous actor. It's like, oh, that, the, the, that, that, that guy. That boy, yeah. Did a great performance, whoever he is. <laughs> He's a sweet boy. Anyway, what did he say? He said, I wish my spidey senses would tingle when I was about to buy something dumb. Was that something we said last yeah, week? Yeah, I think it was. But honestly, same, because I relate to that now more than ever. I'm moving out soon. I've been buying the most... Useless amount, like amount of furniture ever that could fit into my room, and I regret it. So, yeah. And he says, "Tips, could you say when the issue was released?" Whoops. Oh, we still can. Oh yeah, we still can. I guess. Well, we'll are you able to bring it up? Yeah. I'll just bring it up. Real and he long. said, it "Would help knowing how far along we are." That's actually true. Yeah. It's been what seven years since we started reading. Not since we started reading. No, since no, no, the no. comic yeah, started. Since, yeah. yeah. Sorry. We've been doing this podcast for seven years. Seven years for old people. Yeah, gee willikers. This one came out. Oh, sorry. You keep going while I find it. Uh, Last week we accused him of being a fake fan. Not a fake fan, but that he listens to us ironically out of spite. And he did not... Take it very He did well. not take, he did not like that we I'm said so this. I'm so sorry. I feel said, so bad about Excuse it. Excuse me in capital letters. I definitely do not listen to this pod ironically. Definitely not. Very bad. Sad. I, that's what he said. Okay. I can't tell if that's irony or not. I think it's a little mixture. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry for accusing you of something so brash, Thomas. You're my friend, so I, I apologize formally on air, on live podcast. There you go. What do you have to say about that, Thomas? Yeah. Can't wait to see your tweet next week and we forget what context <laughs> the, the question was. Yeah. As a token of my apology, I'm here to tell you that issue 73 of The Amazing Spider-Man that Mike read came out on June the 10th, 1969. A 69. Are oh, you reading the, the rest of the tweets? No, you know, I'm just telling him when, because he asked. Oh, because he did say a tweet that said like, oh, true, very similar to that. I was like, wait, Whoa. what are you, what are you reading? <laughs> okay, you go. He then. said, glad to be participating. Sixty nine, a yay, a. And he also said, I'm not sure if I believe Sammy about her robot theory, but don't play with knives unless you have already. In which case, call an ambulance. Oh, so that's why. Okay. Call an ambulance. That's why I'm bleeding. (laughs) Oh, no. No. Well, at least that means you're not a robot. Yeah. Maybe. I guess. I hope so. I mean, how does it really work, honestly? And he also said he listens to the whole pod, unlike the other plebs. Oh, the best, the only, Thomas Lee. Thank you, Yeah. So, um, should we explain what happened at the end of last week's episode? I think we should, yeah. When Tom Holland (laughs) arrived here. Yeah. Yeah. Cut to the clip from last week before we stopped recording. Hello. Oh, Tom, what 
are you doing? Oh, I was hiding from the scary men oh, and woman. No. I think it's a woman. Yeah, well, I mean, do robots have gender in your opinion? Yes. Okay, well then. I fell in love once with a, oh. a beautiful robot named Margaret. Not Karen? She was a computer. Oh, okay. A printer nice. of sorts. Okay, well, let's leave that story right there. I don't want to know any yeah, more about that. That's Tom, a bit... Tom... Look, these guys just want to find their mates in the deep, dark core of the... The, the earth. The actual earth that we stand And they need upon. a sacrifice. So, like, if you're not going to sacrifice yourself, like, do you have any other alternatives? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm sorry to be this, like, harsh with you, but, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a trained assassin. Oh, oh. In my dimension. And, uh, oop. <laughs> and, uh, oop. <laughs> oh, my God. I, yeah, you know that interview that you did when you said that? I thought that was pretty funny. What? I haven't been on the Far From Home oh, press tour. That was the other Tom Holland. That was the other Tom Holland, yeah. But any, anyways, yes. Um, I could hire you. Could hire me to kill someone, maybe. Well, we don't need you to I kill just, yeah. someone, dude. We just need you. To, we just we, we thought you'd be a good loophole because you're from another dimension. So like, we, we can't, it can't be traced back to anyone. There's no yeah. evidence that. Yeah, because if we just murder? get rid of you, then, like, who will miss you, you know? Because there's yeah. already a Tom Holland here. But I'm really good at killing. I could <laughs> kill a guy with my bare hands and no one would know. Could no. you kill yourself with your bare hands? Yeah, could you do that? Because, like, if you kill someone, it can be traced back yeah. really easily. Yeah, it's pretty... And you know what? If you do that, the real Tom Holland, I mean, you are, but, I mean, the one from this dimension is going to get in a lot of trouble. And do you want that, man? Yeah. Can I kill that French guy with the baguette or the robot? <laughs> um, no, because no. they're the ones that need to, you know, get to the underground. Yeah, you know they, what I mean? they're the ones who need to find their friends. And also robots don't have souls, so it wouldn't count. Yeah, robot wouldn't work and yeah. French people don't have souls either. Yeah, exactly. So, so Tom. It wouldn't work either If you way. can't come up with a serious solution to this, uh, I still have the sword here from season two. We're going to just have to... The web you want, no, no, man. no, no. I will think of a solution. It involves a lot of lotion. Oh. And a lot of commotion. Oh, okay. I'll come back to you when I have more specifics. Okay, great. That sounds <laughs> okay. awesome, Tom. <laughs> um, should we tell French Mike and Robert Sammy that I you can, were here? and Yeah. Like that you have a lotion plan? A lotion commotion. That will cause a lot of commotion? Yeah. No, it would be a surprise, a mass genocide. No, it oh, would oh. I'll let you know. Okay, well, that was a bit. All right, bye. Bye, Tom. Bye. He was definitely going to. Oh, he's. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, and. Uh, and uh, okay, well, there, he's gone now, definitely. So that was the the segment <laughs> from last week before we yeah, stopped we, recording yeah. that week's episode. It's an archive from last week, so there you go. Yeah. And that wasn't because we forgot to put it at the start at all. That was just because, you know, we we put this stuff at the end full of fans. It's like the after credit scene of the Peter Pan podcast, you know. Not, exactly. Not all people that see Marvel movies stay for the after credits because they don't really give a shit, but, you know. That's why. That's why we're here. <laughs> You're right. Yes, that is why we're here. Um, yeah, we just want to do some fan service for you. <laughs> that's why. Hope you enjoyed that little snippet, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, we do this for you. <laughs> yeah, we do this for, just for you. Uh, yeah, if you want to <laughs> follow us <laughs> on social media, we're sorry, uh, but we we have social media. <laughs> At Peter Palmer Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, yeah, we do stuff on there sometimes. It's mainly just to let you know what's happening the coming week, other YouTube videos that come out. And if you want to send us a lengthy hate mail, you can do that at peterpalmerpod at gmail.com. And we'll read it for sure. We will read on it. On the podcast. So, like, if you want to get involved, then, yeah, you can do that. You can make up a fake email if you want. If you don't want us to know it's you, you could call yourself... Hedgehog Lover 2524 
at hotmail.com. Or maybe try. And we never know who it's you. Jeff Goldblum plays Sonic and Sonic does the beep test at hotmail.com. That's a bit, I think that's a bit long to be an email. I don't think they'd let you do that. Really? Yeah. I think there's like a yeah. character limit. Sure. Whatever you think. Should I try? I should let, let me know, Thomas, if there's a character limit to emails. <laughs> e- email addresses. Anyways, good night. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. We're sorry this episode couldn't be better, but uh, we want to go to sleep. We're doing the best we can, (laughs) given the circumstances. Bye. I love you. (laughs) Can you believe we've been sitting here for six hours and we haven't done the podcast? (laughs) Really? Yeah, it's 6.30 p.m. now. We probably... We had that short break to get Red Rooster. We haven't done much else otherwise. What the fuck? That makes me so upset. I had so, oh my God.